Hello lovely people! Welcome to my 2019 vintage gift guide and I'm really excited to share with you some kind of ideas I have had for nice things you can gift your family and friends. All yourself, because no one is saying you can't just make a fancy stocking full of things for yourself. What? By the way, this jumper is available from the merch shelf beneath this video. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I have been doing an advent outfit challenge where I choose a commenter on each of my advent outfit posts to send a Christmas card to. I've been so excited writing them all and sending them off because seriously, I am one of those people who loves giving presents even more than I love receiving them. So I've decided to send some more presents out. Keep watching until the end of the video when I have a very special giveaway announcement. But time for another quick announcement. Before that, I would like to welcome all of the newest members of the Kelgren Fossard Club, because we have really grown in the last few days. And I'm assuming that's because YouTube have just opened up the function on some more, to some more countries, as they're now allowing people to purchase channel memberships directly in the YouTube iOS app. And I think it's just in a few countries currently, but they have told me that they'll be rolling it out further soon. So yay! If you don't know what the Calgary Fozar Club is, it's a little private members club that I have here on YouTube where people can support the channel and at the same time get access to fun things like a monthly behind the scenes video, birthday shout outs, members only posts, custom emojis for live streams. Oh, don't forget, we're all having a live stream on the 21st and you get my little face after your name in the comments. On with our exciting Christmas gifts. This year I wanted to do something a little different and a little more sustainable and focus on true vintage gifts. Because what is 2019 if not all of us panicking about the environment? By the way, if you haven't seen Lena Norms's A Guide to Positive Panic series, then definitely go check that out. It's very informative. I learned things like wrapping paper is not recyclable. If you put it in the recycling, it will contaminate everything and maybe your entire street's recycling will be put into landfill, so wow. To be honest, this is the first year that I've lived in a house that doesn't have an open fire and I'm very used to just turning off all the central heating and sitting in that one room, keeping ourselves warm through burning wrapping paper. Yes, England really is like the films. But I now know not to put the paper into the recycling this year, so. Newspaper and brown paper are recyclable, however, to wrap things in that. And I'm going to be using up the wrapping paper rolls I do still have because otherwise that is wasteful, but only to give it to people I am sure are fully aware they can't recycling it or I'm seeing them in person and handing it to them and can tell them not to recycle it, which is a very weird thing to say because normally I'm telling people the opposite. Next year, I'm going to look into wrapping in cloth. Please remind me of that in November next year because I have memory problems and I will forget the existence of this video even, so probably in a few days. So Claudia and I headed to our favorite antique shop to see what we could find. <laughs> We're in Lewis and we're going shopping for some second-hand goodies. making me think of Philip Pullman. It's a compass. Oh. But I don't know why it's got all these bits inside. Maybe you've got to like... Wow. Have a mirror. It's a very fancy little compass. Oh. The first thing to catch my eye were these 1980s gold toned scarf clips. Now, since fashion is nothing if not repetitive, you can find a lot of things that are kind of 1940s and 1950s elements in things from the 1980s. I don't actually intend to use these as scarf clips, however. I'm just going to clip them onto my shoes and make my shoes look like they have a fancy back. They're in really good condition, um, which for things that are originally 40s and 50s aren't necessarily, isn't necessarily the case. Uh, they're quite weighty though, actually, and they're very, very pretty. I love a good cameo. Makes me really pleased. I've always wanted proper cameo brooch one day. As such, they're a kind of great little accessory that you can 
really used on a whole wide variety of clothes, which means that they're really super wearable because you can use them over and over and over again. And I'm clearly feeling better, or I've just had a lot of lemsip because I'm like, woo! <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm good. Now, the second thing is this filigree gold brooch, which I'm in love with. It's so pretty. It's a bow brooch, guys. It's a bow, and it's filigree, like my engagement ring. This is gonna look absolutely wonderful accessorizing some of my dresses. Okay. It reminds me of something my grandmother had. She had this little coronation thing, which had like little horses carrying along the Queen's coronation carriage. Yeah. And it, it was really, I used to always play with it. I love like little moving things like this. Why do you need to buy anything new? Never. There you go. Done. The third thing I don't actually have to show you because Claudia failed to hide it from him and then he took it. But we found some really great kids toys at the antique shop for our nephew. Uh, it was this really lovely little car that we found. He's really into them at the moment, especially working vehicles. He's not even two, but he's really into anything that's like a truck, a tractor, a digger, police cars. Um, we managed to get him a little fire engine, which he was like, yes. There were so massive bags of Lego at the shop, which was so much cheaper than you could possibly buy Lego for now. And, and a huge box of cars. They had obviously separated out the ones with lead in, but do use caution. Don't give a, a, a lead car to a child. We've learnt these lessons now. If it's not the lead that worries you about secondhand toys, but you're actually quite worried about germs, buy toys you can boil, like the aforementioned Lego. Or there are obviously the plastic cars, which you can just... <laughs> ah! I mean, don't take it out while it's still boiling. I don't know why I did that. Uh, vintage red and gold baubles. Excuse me, how beautiful. Ooh. Next up, I was absolutely delighted to find this set of original 1950s baubles. They're amazing, look at these. Oh, I'm in love. So as I mentioned, we have a very small nephew and he loves coming to our house and playing ball with Tilly. Absolutely loves it. First thing he does when he walks in our front door is he has to try and find a little ball that he can bounce on the ground that Tilly will chase. Um, and he came to our house after we put the Christmas tree up and, uh, and took a ball off the tree and tried to bounce it. <laughs> yeah, it was one of my grandparents' glass baubles, so that went well. But the great thing is he has now learnt not to do that. So that was wonderful. It was very scary for him. He was fine, he's absolutely fine. Don't worry, he threw it far away enough from himself that he was in no danger. He could throw surprisingly far. But yeah, so now he just knows not to take things off a tree and smash them. So that's good. You may feel a bit like, oh, I don't know, I feel bad having these beautiful baubles and they're vintage, and what if I ruin them? And I mean, really don't worry about breaking old things because A, if it's lasted this long, probably quite adorable. And B, what is the point in having something if you don't use it? And as a vintage decor lover, I just couldn't pass up the chance to get my hands on some baubles. And think what a lovely present that could be for someone, if you know their colours, obviously. Or hey, if they're the type of person who loves a completely multicoloured tree, go for it! Find them a beautiful vintage bauble. Please let me know if you've done that for someone, because I think that's a great idea. I mean, for me, I, I only have things on my tree that are red and gold, so you'd have to be very specific. I have a colour thing. It's weird. And then I met something that made me very, very happy. <gasps> Cape, apparently from the 1850s. Can I try it on? I do really want it. It's 95 pounds. Quite a splash out purchase. It's so nice. She's in 1850s. Beautifully designed woolen cape. And she's so beautiful. Did I buy it? Of course I bought it. How could I leave her there? Will I wear it? Oh, you bet. 
Yes, yes I will. So is is that a gift you could give to someone else? Yes, yes it is. Yes, yeah, sure. Is it a gift mainly for, for me? Yeah, yeah. Should you see such a thing and should you purchase it for yourself? Yes, 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 yes. Christmas is about treating yourself too. Titties. What is it and why? I don't know, but they were really popular. I remember my grandma had some. You can also get really cool DVDs. There are some amazing old films that you just can't find on Netflix. And also it's quite nice to just have the physical copies as well. I love the Velvet Love Story. It's one of my deep favourites. If you have an old film lover in your life, picking up some of these DVDs is an excellent idea. They're so, so cheap. We got three for a pound. I left the other one downstairs and now I don't want to walk. But anyway, so we got three for a pound. It's such good value. And this will bring you laughter, joy, tears, heartwarming moments that you can share with the whole family. You can get fabulous old things in antique shops, but also like, really, really creepy things. I, I, I mean, hey, I'm not judging. Maybe you have a gothy friend who would love a dismembered mannequin hand. Anything is possible. In some creepily realistic looking ducklings that I'm now realizing probably were ducklings at one point. Yeah, that's just a real box oh, of ducklings. Oh yeah, okay. It's a bit creepy. Doll's house. See, I, don't, we, I want a doll's house. That's a bit scary. What? Doll's house is freaking me out. Well, to be fair, I mean, this one is painted black on the inside. Uh, yeah, it's like so, the horror house. <laughs> not sure what went wrong here. Also, what's going on? Okay, someone made it creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. But before that, it was probably really nice. And indeed, here I am, spoiling my mother's Christmas present. Hi, Mama. Don't worry, we got them for half of their usual retail cost. She loves a good bargain. Get us a gift set of Yeah, good. And now, what would a Christmas goodies list from Jessica be without Bessemer Cosmetics? The premier vintage beauty brand in my eyes. Their style is classic, but the products are cruelty free. And they're a small shop, so I love supporting them. And just look at that packaging! The Sleeping Beauty palette, 20 matte shades, taken from the original film. See here on my lids. Also, my everyday vintage makeup video. And they even have things for people who aren't necessarily makeup lovers, but just love beautiful things. It's a Sleeping Beauty mirror. It says Sleeping Beauty on it. It's beautiful. I've wanted a mirror like this for so long. They currently have a whole range of Christmas bundles too. Highly recommend heading to your local antiques or secondhand goods or charity shop because then you can buy things but not add to the, the doomed consumerism of the world. It's fine, it's fine. Just, just a small bit of panic, just a small bit of panic, it's fine. It's fine. And when you are buying new things, you can always shop small, like Besame or a local independent shop. And I know that isn't necessarily the best advice for everyone because not everyone can even leave their home. And I myself can find it sometimes quite difficult to shop from a small brand or as much as I'd love to go and support my local high street. I spend a lot of my time in my house and in bed being ill, so. But if you have any tips for how you can shop small and be more measured and sustainable in your choices, then please do leave all of your tips in the comments down below. And finally, for the vintage lover in your life, a gift they can truly treasure for years. 1950s in Vogue. It's a lavish dedication to the 1950s as captured in the pages of American Vogue. And it features photographs from the greatest photographers, along with many wonderful articles and all of the behind the scenes history you can handle. I was riveted. Sorry, right, I'm supposed to be filming. It just genuinely keeps sucking me in. There's so much to see and to learn, and I love these photos. Oh my gosh. And I'm so, so excited to tell you that the publishing company Thames & Hudson have three additional copies of 1950s in Vogue signed by me that they will be gifting to subscribers of mine. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel and to follow my Instagram at JessGrashTheCloset and leave a comment on this video that includes your Instagram username and 
your favorite gift from this video. Winners will be chosen on the 18th of December, 2019 and notified over Instagram DMs. Good luck. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall see you for tomorrow's video when we'll be having fun at the YouTube Christmas party. See you then. Thrones. Who had that made and why? I don't know, you need to explain me what xylophone sound holds. Xylophone. <laughs> really? Okay. Magic sound. This one's really adorable though.